ready for first pitch on this Sunday game. Case Sanderson coming into the batter's box, facing Luke Benneke to start things off. Benneke getting set and delivers the first pitch. In there for strike number one. First pitch breaking ball there from Benneke. High 70s. Looked like a little bit of a cutter. Sanderson, second consecutive start. Did not start game one. Leading off today for the Huskers. Here comes the next pitch. Fouled off to the left side. Good for Benneke to get ahead. Showing good breaking ball, then fastball command. Sanderson batting 371 on the season. Has an on-base percentage of over 500. Watches that one go by count at one and two. Mentioned the VLO down. That one's sitting 89 miles an hour, so they get it back up. The one two pitch. Make that two two. Going back with the breaking ball. See the stats there for Sanderson. An OPS of 877. The two two. That's lined out to left field, a leadoff single for Case Anderson. And if you're doing that, that is probably why you're batting leadoff and have an on-base percentage close to 500. Just got a good, solid two-strike approach that time. Got a fastball, looked like middle in, and kind of just missed it and see the replay there. Just really nice piece of hitting, not trying to do too much with it. Fastball kind of right in back here of the inner half, just stays back on it, pushes it to the left field. Silva up to the plate now. Shows bunt, fouls that off. Silva was 0 for 4 yesterday, 2 for 4 in the Friday game. That 0 for yesterday snapped a four game hitting streak for. Benneke getting set, Silva still showing bunt. And he lays it straight to Benneke and over to first for one out, but the runner does advance to second. That's bolt ball. Yeah, solid, just fundamental baseball. I mean, bunting, stealing, hit and run. I mean, Silva's really someone who can kind of do it all for Nebraska. Kept it their team leader in steals with 16 and 17 attempts as well. Good fundamental baseball player. And setting up a powerful middle of the order here for the Cornhuskers in the score position. If you're Luke Benneke, you have to be careful with Cole Evans here. Three for three on the day yesterday with a home run. First pitch in their first strike. Three for three, first pitch strikes now for Benneke. Good sign for him, see if he can keep that moving forward. One out, runner off of second. Evans swings and it's fouled off. Looks like it was hit off him. Another two-pitch fastball breaking ball sequence. Benneke's he's gone to that three or four times already in varying orders. Good way to kind of keep the hitters off balance. Here comes the 0-2. Foul back. Like the challenge pitch there on 0-2. Saw the Sanderson kind of once he got to that position, nibbled a little bit. Two kind of non-competitive misses and then came back with one over the plate. Sanderson got the base hit on. That one going right at him with an 0-2 fastball up and then. Benneke gets set, looks back at second, and delivers. Just misses outside. Now that's a perfect 0-2 pitch, though. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to lay off that pitch if you're having. Starts over the middle of the plate, just bent off the edge. The 1-2, that's fouled off. Evan's trying to protect anything that comes over the plate, like you just said. And again, you saw with Sanderson see it again with Evans. and. Combining that with a butt from Silva, just good, solid approaches by these Nebraska hitters. Evan shortening up with two strikes. Here comes the one, two. Up high, and now the count even. Something to watch. Benneke already about to make his 14th pitch of the first inning here. Still only has one out. Batter kind of critical for keeping the pitch, pitch count down. If you get here comes the pitch. Down in the dirt, and now the count is full. You almost see with Evans fouling off those three consecutive 0-2 pitches kind of may, may have made Benneke a little more tentative out of the mound, back-to-back -back, not competitive pitches. The payoff pitch. That's away. 
Now two runners on in this first inning. Huskers looking to punch early. And Beneke just one walk over his last 12 innings. So really he's done a good job of maintaining that, or maintaining his control, but really great at bat by Evans battling back to the 0-2 count. Now Tyler Stone up to the batter's box. Watches the first one down in the dirt. Markinson keeps it in front of him. After the brief mound visit, Benneke gets set once again. Runners off of first and second. Here comes the pitch. Fouled back. Big swing from Stone was a little out in front of the breaking ball. Stone coming in with a 288 average. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Make that 1-2. Good way for Benneke to battle back after giving up the walk in the last at bat. That one's high. His problem hasn't necessarily been getting the two strikes. It's been what he's done once he's gotten there. Yeah, he started out 0-2 against Cole Evans. That one's hit out to right field. It's going to drop. Going around third is Silva. Now sliding into the bag. Huskers get out early thanks to Tyler Stone. That's an RBI double. Yeah, again, Benneke just struggling to put hitters away with two strikes. That one looked like a spinner that didn't really spin. He just kind of hung right in the middle of the plate and Stone turning on it. It was early, but not too early. Put it right in the corner. Nice play out there in right field to keep the ball off the wall and get it in quickly, but still Huskers Still in a very dangerous spot with two in scoring position. Runners off the second and third for Josh Karen, who we highlighted in the open. Ball comes inside to him. I think it hit him. And it hit him. So now bases loaded for Luke Benneke. Only one out. Again, you wonder, it just has to start to probably get to your head a little bit if you're Luke Benneke. You've already counted three of Nebraska's better hitters to two strikes, and all you have to show for it is one out, already one run hit, and the base is loaded. Now the challenge for Benneke becomes damage control, trying to get out of this with zero, one more runs. Lined out from Anglum, and there's the double play. I think he slid back in safe a second. He did, excuse me, so. Still bases loaded for Nebraska, but a nice play there by the Northwestern infield. Livermore tried to sell it, like he got back there quick enough, tried to. Sold, sold it to me. Come across quick, you see the replay of it here. Seems to be pretty clearly get the hand now. But again, big out for Benneke early in the count, the pitch count down, and also now he's one out away from getting out of the slowly one run. Joshua Overbeat up to bat now. First pitch comes in for a strike. So two outs, bases loaded. Luke Benneke trying to avoid putting more runs on the board. Already a 1-0 lead for the Huskers. That one's down in the dirt. Overbeat missed a month between February 9th, or February 18th and March 13th. It's come back and been strong. One for six in the series so far. The 1-1. One, one. That's out to right and lined out right into the glove of McElfatrick to end the inning. <laughs> Quick first pitch of the bottom of the first. That's outside. They mentioned Bean Kina kind of moving around the order a little bit. Still looking to get going, just three for his last 22. He swings on that one and it's popped up to center field. Lots of Huskers camping under it. And the first out is retired after two pitches. Yeah, and the wind is kind of blowing kind of out towards right field. You saw, you can look at the replays. The ball just kind of drifted into kind of right center field, pushing Terry back to the other side. 
and McElfatrick now digging in for Northwestern, 347 average. First pitch is a ball. Went fastball. McConaughey really two or three pitch mix, depending on that one out to center field by McElfatrick over the head, and he's going to go to two. McElfatrick continues his hot streak, and there's a double to get one on in the bottom of the first. Yeah, just right on the fastball that time, hitting it directly into center field. Kind of one hopped up against the wall. It seemed like Riley Silva kind of drifted as opposed to sprinting back. I think if he gets on his horse a little bit more going back, then he could probably get to that ball. But those line drives right at you are kind of the hardest ones to judge sometimes. Just slipped over his head. First pitch to Jackson Freeman, who we highlighted in the open, reaching in 23 of his first 24 games as a Wildcat. Count at 1-0. and McConaughey deals. Over the plate. Excuse me. Yeah, it was. It is over the plate. Scoreboard said it was a ball. 1-1 one, one count. McElfatrick off the second. McConaughey looking back. And delivers. Inside. Make that 2-1. and one. Very limited movement in the stands for Jackson Freeman. Stands kind of tall on that left-hand batter's box, kind of a subtle load back and ready to explode forward. Not a lot of wasted movement. The 2-1. Fouled back. Freeman was two for four yesterday with two RBI. One for two in the Friday contest. Also has a great eye, leads this Northwestern team with 18 walks. That one skied to right field. It's going back and it's over the wall. Jackson Freeman, the first year, gets the Wildcats on top with a big home run in the bottom of the first. Mitch and not a lot of wasted movement, just got the hands inside. Lofted one, kind of a little bit into the wind tunnel, but that one's getting out. Wind or no wind, right off the barrel and to the kind of the deep corner of this ballpark, but again, good piece of hitting and a great response for Northwestern after Nebraska gets on the board at the bottom of the first. Freeman knew it off the bat. Watching it on its way out. Northwestern has the lead. First pitch in to Bennett Markinson now. Batting 354 on the season. Really a Mr. Consistency for this Northwestern team. Hits in 14 of his last 15. Also RBIs in his last four. That one's out to center field, but right into the glove of Silva. So two outs now in the bottom of the first. Outside of B and Keena's pop-up, that's now three balls that have just been tattooed in a row, row by Northwestern. Michael Patrick's double, Freeman's homer, and then even that one results in out markets and still hit it on the screws, which is right at Silva at center. Trent Liolis digging in now from the left side. Swings on the first pitch. Liolis coming off a couple games ago in the midweek against Northern Illinois. A five hit game, including which all five hits went to the opposite field. McConaughey getting ahead quickly on him. 0 2 count. McConaughey's ERA has already got it by a full run after Freeman's Hummer. That one's down and away. 1 2 count now. Here comes the one, two. Swung on and fouled to the Nebraska dugout. Here comes the pitch. That skied up in the air, foul. We'll do it again at one, two. And still, despite Lyola's having five opposite field hits a couple games ago, still a huge shift on the Nebraska infield. That one comes in right in front of the plate. Good old 56 foot, 56 footer. You see that graphic there from Conahay had not allowed any runs in any of his previous five outings. Coming really hot, but even snapping that early. The 2-2. Two -two. 
over the plate to end the inning. McConaughey responds after the two-run home run by Jackson Freeman. The Wildcats get out to a 2-1 lead in the first inning. Come to the second inning where the Huskers really capitalized yesterday. That's somewhat of an understatement, putting up seven runs in that frame. Obviously, the big blow by Kara in the grand slam. Dylan Carey in the batter's box right now. 1 1 count. And for Luke Binnicky, he's got to be feeling pretty good. Kind of had a little bit of a dicey first inning, but only gave up the one run, leaving the bases loaded. Now has the opportunity to go out and pitch with the lead. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on and that's skied out to center field. Arnone under it and he records the out. So a quick one out, first out for Luke Benneke. And again, if Benneke can be doing that all day, he'd be very happy. Again, doesn't have overpowering stuff. We saw when he got the two strikes, kind of struggled to put hitters away. But a good solution to that is to get outs early and counts before you even get to two strikes, like we saw there. Rhett Stokes now up for the Huskers, hitting 365 on the season. Two for eight on the series. Another first pitch strike. That one coming in at 89 miles per hour. Stokes does one of those Juco transfers you mentioned. Led all of Juco with 11 triples as a freshman. Stokes. Fouls that one off, 0-2 count, like you said, Benneke has done a good job of getting ahead early with his batters. It's just a matter of putting them away. Here comes the 0-2. Inside, 1-2. Pretty good 0-2 pitch there. Just a bit off the black. Pitch count's still a little high for Benneke. would love to get another early out here. He gets set and deals. Fouled off once again. Can you see that kind of like on that slider? It doesn't kind of have enough horizontal movement to miss the bat at these Nebraska hitters. It's a good job of kind of throwing them off, allowing them to foul it off, but making it pretty easy for them to live to see another pitch. Benneke deals. Check swing, did he go? Maybe said it was tipped into the mid. Not really see much contact there, but apparently the umpire did behind home plate. Home plate umpire Corey Higgins it today. No Two real out. dispute from Stokes. Two outs for Benneke. As he returns to the top of the order for the Huskers, Case Sanderson. First pitch strike to him. Started off the day with a leadoff single. Benneke gets set and delivers. That's fouled sharply down the left side. Again, you see his very much thinking about going to the opposite field. Already did it with his hit the first inning, and then that one's still trying to pick that left field corner. Benneke slowing down the pace. Gets set and deals. Inside. Now he's really starting to try and test each of the past two hitters once he got the two strikes inside. Hey, with the approach to Sanderson, not a bad idea. The one, two. Looked to be the change up that time instead of the slider. One of the first ones we've seen. Really, the slider clearly his secondary pitch. Here comes the two, two with two outs. That's upstairs, runs the count full. And again, gets his hitter to 0-2, and then kind of starts nibbling just a little bit. Here comes the payoff pitch from Benneke. Swung on, and that one's hit to left field. Preston Knott records the out, diving for it. And that's going to end the inning for Northwestern. Preston Knott making an impact in left field.
But again, in there for his defense and showing why the top after right. First pitch is a ball from McConaughey. McConaughey gets set, winds and deals. That's in their first strike. The 1-1, one, one. up and away. Fastball seems to be sitting low 90s, breaking ball low 80s for McConaughey here over his first 22 pitches. The 2-1 pitch. Just misses the corner of the plate, 3-1. A lot of late life on that slider. And he gets hitters to chase. He's actually ranked 11th in the nation in chase rate for that slider. That one's fouled off by Knott. Full count now. McConaughey, the fastball that's 88 to 92. So that one's skied up in the air. Center fielder Riley Silva coming under it for the first out. Nice job by McConaughey to battle back, fell behind 3-1, but then challenged Knott with a couple fastballs. Now coming in for Northwestern is Sonny Rayo, who has had some limited playing time at the beginning of the season, but this is his second start of the series. First pitch shown as a ball. And Northwestern kind of had a revolving door at that DH spot. Really all year, seen some of Will Johnson there, Sonny Rayo now getting the second start of the year. Transfer from South Florida. Conaghy going back with the off speed there. He delivers. That's chopped to the first baseman, Stone. He's going to step on the bag. I think that was the first change up we've seen in the day from McConaughey right there in between the tight of two speeds, right there, 85 miles an hour. Coming in, you could tell, had Rayo out in front on the front foot, rolled over and hit off the end of the bat. Easy play for the second out. Each starter kind of seems to be settling in at their secondary work. Yeah, you mentioned that change up. He doesn't really use it that often. It's a rare third pitch from him. He's mainly fastball, a slider and then only really throws that change up to lefties. Goes with the heater there. Pitch to Tony Livermore is in the dirt, 1-1 one, one count. Livermore, the senior shortstop for Northwestern, batting 172 as of now. Conahay deals, swing and a miss from Livermore. Yeah, Livermore just in a bit of a funk offensively for Northwestern right now. Had a hit yesterday that snapped an eight-game hitless streak. The one-two. Everyone in Nebraska thought that was strike three. Yeah, that just missed. You heard the crowd definitely signaling that they thought that should have been strike three. Pretty sizable Nebraska crowd today. Last line down the right field side and just, just foul for Livermore. Pitch almost right again. Seemed like he was close to hit him, but got the hands inside of it and almost kept it fair. One of McConaughey's harder fastballs, 292 miles an hour. Yeah, like I said, he sits 88 to 92. He's topped out at 95 before. The 2-2. Two -two. Up and away, the count runs full. I would have tried to go slider more inside there. It could be a tough pitch for pitchers to feel confident throwing just because of the risk of hitting these lefty batters, but after the fastball going in there, could have gotten lift more to chase. The payoff pitch. That's up in the air to left center field. Silva handles it, and that will be the end of the inning. Top of the third here in Evanston. Luke Benneke still on the bump for Northwestern. 
working with a two to one lead. Digging in is Riley Silva. First pitch is good for a strike. Silva had the sack bunt in the top of the first to move over Sanderson. Here comes the pitch from Beneke. That one up the middle and lined out to the shortstop, Tony Livermore. It's the third or fourth line out Nebraska's hit in this game. Weirdly though, none of them have really been that hard hit. That one was just kind of a floater out there towards Livermore, positioned perfectly. Didn't really have to move very much. But another early out for Luke Bittigy. Now facing Cole Evans, who reached with a walk in the top of the first. First pitch is a ball. Evans batting 320 on the season. So that runs inside. Benneke gets set and fires. Evans did hold up on that pitch, so count runs 3-0. Benneke has done a good job so far of getting ahead on hitters, but looking to avoid his second walk to Evans right now. Pitches in there for a strike, 3-1 count. Again, you mentioned the Vila is still sitting probably 87 to 89 for the majority of this game. The 3-1. Over the plate, Benneke battling back after getting behind 3-0. Here comes the payoff pitch. Right up the middle and off of Benneke's foot. That's going to dribble into center field. Evans rounding and got slipped up, has to slide back safely into first. That was an interesting sequence of events there. <laughs> Ground ball kind of went right off the ankle of Benneke. I think he's fine, just more so jumping in annoyance that ball caught him and then drifted to center field. Then Evans set to make what would have been a very aggressive attempt to stretch a ground ball into shallow center field into a double. I think it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise that the turf monster got him as he went around first base because he probably would have been cut down. Arno was just getting the ball as he was three or four steps past first. Evans off of first for Tyler Stone, who had a, an RBI double in the top of the first. And that's when that first inning kind of teetering on the break of getting out of hand, but then Vinicky able to bounce back nicely. Evans with three stolen bases on the season. The pitch from Benneke, that's into right field. Going station to station are the Huskers. Now Tyler Stone is two for two on the day. Yeah, very similar way to how he got his first hit. Ball kind of down towards the outside corner. Just went down, got it, poked it solidly in the right field. Now here's another opportunity for Karen to Anderson's storage station. has been where he has kind of thrived on the year hitting. 4.05 with Anderson's storage position. Similar position the last time he was up. Got hit by a pitch to load the bases in the top of the first. That one's away to Karen. Started 48 games last year. Now started 22 this year. Benneke deals. It's out to center field. Chasing it back is our known to the warning track. Runners are going to stay where they are, so Benke does the job against Josh Karen, who, like you said, is very hot with runners in scoring position. Yeah, and he um, got, unfortunately for him, drove that to the deepest part of the ballpark, out in right center field. He gets that probably a few feet to the right that has a chance of getting out of here. The drove our known back all the way to the warning track, and somewhat surprised by the base running move by Evans not to tag up. He easily could have made it to third if he did. No, they're down two outs in the inning. It still could be big. Here comes the pitch. That's upstairs to Garrett Anglum, who lined out his first time up. The Nebraska native attended Papillion La Vista High School. That's just right outside of, right outside of Omaha. Pitch comes. Tracking foul into the Nebraska dugout, or excuse me, bullpen. Stone. 
Stone off of first, Evans off of second. Two outs here, Garrett Anglum at the plate. The pitch to him. And a check back by Markinson. Stone slides in safely, but Markinson thought he had him. Yeah, Markinson wanted that one. He was three steps up the third base line after that throw. The throw beat him, but a good slide over by Stone to get the hand in before Loyola's attack. No protest from him or the Northwestern dugout. Get another look at it. Looks like he got that backhand in just ahead of the tag. The one-two pitch. Floated up the right side and handled by Laolis. Benneke strands two to end the inning. Northwestern still up two to one. Evanston for the bottom of the third inning. Northwestern up two to one against Nebraska. Griffin Arnone digging in to lead off the bottom of the third. McConaughey's first pitch is a ball. Big shift to the infield for Arnone. That runs inside against him. McConaughey behind in the count, two and oh. Overbeak, the only defender on the left side playing in on the grass at third. Here comes the pitch. Fouled back towards us in the press box. The 2-1. Inside to Arnone. Arnone batting 232 on the season. Does have three home runs. And that's driven deep to right. Just foul for our, no our known. But like I said, three home runs that has a lot of power. That's at the distance. <laughs> About 10 feet to the wrong side of the foul pole, but one disappeared over the roof of the Trident's Performance Center. The wind is definitely blowing out to right field today. That's over the plate. Our known is rung up. Just a perfect location there with two strikes. Knee high inside corner. Even if Arnone gets the bat to that, he's not doing a whole lot with it. Nice job by McConaughey to battle back. Let's get another look at it. That's just, again, you can't throw it anywhere better than that on a payoff pitch. The lineup turns over for Northwestern. Vince Bianchina back up. He flew out his first time up. McConaughey sets and deals. It's outside, 1-1 one, one count. Went with the slider there. McConaughey works from the dead center of the rubber. You don't really see pitchers favor one side, not really McConaughey. That's hit right to the second baseman in Stokes. So a quick two outs here in the bottom of the third for McConaughey. Another mid-count changeup to a left-hand hitter. You mentioned he likes to throw it to lefties. Did it again there, and it's another time it worked. Started got Rayo, and then that time got B.A. Heater a little out in front, weak liner out the second. Owen McElfatrick now up for the Wildcats. First time up. He doubled. Hitting 250 with two outs on the season. The 0-1, down and away. McConaughey deals. Got a piece of it, fouled back. He was set down his eighth Northwestern Wildcat in a row after Freeman's homer. The one, two. Down in the dirt, and that is going to end the inning. McConaughey goes one, two, three in the bottom of the third. He's recovered well after giving up that two-run homer, like you said. <laughs> Rob 
righty-lefty matchup. First pitch comes into him for a ball. Yeah, Bedecky, you see, this is his 56th pitch to begin the fourth inning. A little high, but only one run given up. That one's over the plate, 1-1 one, one count. And there's been a lot of high stress pitches too, as you see a couple people venturing towards the bullpen down the left field line. The 1-1. One, one. Foul to the left side. Benneke getting ahead once again, 1-2. Already five runners left on base for Nebraska through three innings. Here comes the pitch. Swung on. Staying alive is Overbeek. And like you said, yeah, Nebraska has left five on. Two of those were stranded last inning by Benneke. Benneke gets set. He's taking his time and delivers. That runs inside against Overbeek. The 2-2. Two -two. Down out in front of the plate, and that makes the count run full. Thieva Benneke starts so far, gets ahead 1-2, and now back in a full count. Again, the breaking ball just doesn't seem to have enough late life to really put hitters away so far. The payoff to Overbeek. That's down, and Overbeek will take his base to start off the inning. Looks like Drew Dixon is starting to stretch in the bullpen on the left field line. Looks like he'll be first out of the shoot today. Dylan Carey now digging in for the Cornhuskers. Being Kina in at third. Expect to be bunt. We've already seen Nebraska do it once today. Here comes the pitch. Shows bunt but pulls back. Velo a little down. That would look to be a fastball. It's still 84 miles an hour. Perhaps starting to wear as pitch guy creeps over 60. Gets set. Bunt is still shown and that's fouled way back. And this is a very similar situation to what Nebraska did in the top of the first. Anderson got on with the leadoff single and was bunted over by Silva. Here comes the pitch and that's away. Check back to first. Nebraska a little more ready for it that time. Just to it again, Barkins had tried that the top half of the last inning. And the throw beat Tyler Stone, but avoided the tag. Here comes the 2-1, showing bunt once again. Pulled back. Count three and one. This is always frustrating for a team's pitching coach when Nebraska's trying to give Northwest the out here with the sacrifice bunt. If Benneke could have put one over the plate. He swings away. I say that. <laughs> Fouls it right to Northwestern's dugout. But still, this one he has bunt shown for the first two, three seconds before he delivers. It also can be kind of disorienting for a pitcher to kind of like play mind games. Be like, okay, I know I just need to throw a strike, but it makes it that much harder to do so. The payoff pitch. Lined out to Bean Keene. He's going to throw across. And what a play at the hot corner for the senior. And we mentioned Northwestern's defense in the early going in this one and proving us right here so far. Some really nice plays, particularly knots out in left field. You see that one from Bianchina just moving to his left and big for Benneke to battle back. It's a big swing in the inning. Like he could have been a walk two on, nobody out. Instead, runner remains at first and one out in the inning. Like you said, Overbeek still off of first. It's now Rhett Stokes who struck out his first time. Comes the pitch. Fastball velo definitely down for Benneke. I would be surprised if he comes back out for a fifth inning if he's able to get through this one. Looks over at first. Gets set and deals. Runner goes. So that's fouled down the third baseline. We'll do it again. Seemed like a hit and run that time. Overbeak, though, is seven for nine on stolen base attempts, so he could have a green light to go without a hit and run. Yeah. 
One one count, one out. Benneke looking ahead to Stokes. But he checks back. Probably could have seen that one coming. Pretty common to pick over right after a steal attempt. Benneke once again looking over to first base. He delivers to home this time upstairs. The 2-1. Well, there's a check swing there, and it's a 2-2 count. On the defensive side for Northwestern, Markinson 10 for tw 29 in terms of throwing runners out. Pretty good clip for a catcher. Over Beak off of first. The 2-2. Two -two. Chopped to third, bounces off the glove of Bianchina. Called a foul ball. Maybe a bit of a generous call. Did the hop right over the bag. We May have landed just an inch or two foul. We will do it all over again at two and two. Stokes certainly taking his own sweet time to get back to the batter's box here. <laughs> And like we've said, Northwestern's defense has had to stay ready, especially because Benneke doesn't in really induces a lot of contact, isn't a big strikeout guy, only one on the day. Here comes the pitch. That's outside. Count is now full. Just missed that time. Good idea on the 2-2. Trying to go knee-high outside court as you see the action in the bullpen. Both Dixon and Sengeg up. Here comes the pitch. And it's down low, so two runners on now for Nebraska. And Benneke now at 75 pitches, as you see on your screen. And he seems to be losing some command. And now with the lineup card turning back over to Case Sanderson. Not sure how much longer his leash is with a one run lead. Here comes the pitch. That's down and inside. Sanderson's had a really nice day so far. Two solid contacts to the left side. One, the base hit. The other, the fly out. The result of a very nice catch by Preston Knott. Ball once again down low. 2-0 count. Stokes off a of first after the walk. Overbeak off a of second. One out here. Top of the order for the Cornhuskers. Here comes the 2-0. Another ball, 3-0 count. Benneke seems to be losing steam. He delivers. And a four count walk to load the bases. I feel like this has got to be the end of the line. Here, if one of Sengeg or Dixon is ready. Three walks in the inning. And it appears they're actually going to let him stay in to face Silva. Already got out of one bases loaded, one out jam. Can he do it again? Here comes the pitch. There's a strike for Benneke. Big first pitch there just to get ahead, especially coming off the back to back walks. Riley Silva digging in, and he swings on that one. That's to Michael Patrick. He overthrows that second. The play at the plate. Two runs have already scored. A lot of may mayhem happening. And the Huskers get out to a three to two lead. Yeah, that's, we were talking about a lot of good Northwesterns down in the defensive end, and then that's kind of the opposite side of the spectrum. Michael Patrick initially makes a really nice stop diving to his left, but then just bobbles the ball on the transfer a little bit, throws off his rhythm, throws the ball down the line. Bianchina makes a really nice play to back up this throw, as you see it here. So he kind of bobbles it a little bit, throws it off the line. Bianchina there, but then had plenty of time to throw home, but didn't get his feet set, threw it wide, didn't get by Markinson. 
and then that allowed both other runners to advance, and now still two at scoring position. Runners off of second and third with one out for Drew Dixon. His first pitch is down and away. And again, a tough ask for Dixon here. Not really much room to nibble and kind of settle into his outing. Needs to immediately come out and attack. Walks have been a bit of a problem for him. Ten of them in 13 and two-thirds innings coming in. The 1-0. That's good for a strike. Does have a lot of knifing downward action on that breaking ball. Could be beneficial. Northwestern keeping the infield back also for now. Except for being Kita even with the bag at third. Here comes the pitch. That's for the shortstop Livermore. He's going to gather it and fire over to first for the second out of the inning, but not before Nebraska scores another run. Win-win there for both teams. Northwestern realistically can't be too upset with that. Dixon coming in and retiring his first hitter. Now, Stowe, who's been the hottest hitter for Nebraska against Benneke. Opportunity to add to his RBI total. You mentioned Benneke went three and a third innings, giving up four hits and four runs, one of those unearned. First pitch to Stone inside. Benneke finished with one strikeout on the day. Drew Dixon on the mound now has the most strikeouts for Northwestern. The highest K percentage. So that goes upstairs, 2-0 count. Still a runner off a third. Here comes the pitch. Outside and a 3-0 count for Drew Dixon. It's a good idea there to try and bend the breaking ball back over, but. The 3-0. That's down and Tyler Stone re reaches via the walk. So runners on the corners, two outs. Drew Dixon has retired one batter so far, but looking to get out of this one without further damage. Karen, very dangerous here at the plate. Had that grand slam yesterday in the second. Dixon's yet to be able to put, he's thrown one strike on the breaking ball so far over his first, I think he's thrown six times at this point. The 1-0. Another ball from Dixon. What that means if he's not locating it is that these hitters can really key in on the fastball. Fastball sitting in the upper 80s for Dixon right now. Also has thrown six balls in a row. Stone off of first, Silva off of third. Here comes the pitch. Another ball for Dixon, and he's really struggling with his command right now. Just gave up a walk to Stone. The pitch to Karen. Finally finds the strike zone. The righty righty matchup. Here comes the pitch. They say he did not swing, and that is going to load the bases for Drew Dixon. Mentioned walks were a problem for him coming in. Again, it's that breaking ball command. It has a lot of movement on it, but you can't throw the kind of get me over style early in the count. It really loses a lot of its luster out there. Now another opportunity for Anglin with the bases loaded. His second opportunity already in this game in the first four innings lined out in his first opportunity for bases loaded in the first inning. The pitch to Anglin. In there for a strike. And there is that give me over breaking ball. Maybe he just feels, that one certainly looked like his most comfortable one. Didn't have as much break on it. But it found the strike zone. Bases loaded, two outs for Garrett Anglum. And that's hit sharply. And is going to score a run. Another runner coming around. So a two RBI double for Garrett Anglum. Six to two is now the score for the Cornhuskers. 
Yeah, and Ice Pete's hitting third time's the charm for Anglin with runners on base. He's got one that he liked and put it right up the middle. And good hustle, too, to stretch that into a double. Ball not necessarily hit to the wall, but solidly in the gap, thinking two right off the bat, and gets there. Grounded too hard for Livermore to get a read on. Runners still on second and third. Now Joshua Overby got the plate, swings on the first one. A big five run inning so far for the Cornhuskers. Cook never has been a problem for Northwestern. Richard gave up the seven in the second yesterday. The 0-1. That's Shop Deliolis, and that will end the inning. But again, not before Nebraska is able to plate five, capturing the lead and breaking this one open six to two. Nebraska, as you see Northwestern's head coach in his first year, Ben Greenspan, has already matched the win total from last year through his first 24 games. His first pitch comes into Jackson Freeman. He's responsible for both runs on the board for the Wildcats with a two run home run to right field. McConaughey still out there. Yeah, McConaughey not only still out there, but solidly in a groove. And now with a four-round lead to work with, can just get right back to attacking these hitters. Really, he's made only two mistakes in the game. Those are the two hits to Mackle, Patrick, and Freeman. Since then, retired every Northwestern hitter. He gets ahead on Freeman here. The 0-2 pitch. Runs inside the fastball. Still hitting at 92. It's really impressed with his ability to challenge on the inner half to these left-handed hitters. So a lot of fastballs. Right near the black, struck out our number, pitch very similar to that. That's popped up to center field. Silva camping underneath it. And McConaughey continues to go in rhythm for the Cornhuskers. Yep, it's about nine in a row. Markinson also hit it on the screws his last time, but just right at the center field, fielder Silva. First pitch to Markinson, catches the corner. Markinson top 20 in the Big Ten in batting average. Tied for 17th coming into the play today. Like you said, he flew out his first time up. Count at one and one. I think Markinson does a really good job making contact, only nine strikeouts by playing in every game. Makes contact there right up the middle, but a routine play for the second baseman, Stokes. Good analytics there by Nebraska, and Markinson shaded to the left side. As a result, Stokes didn't have to move to make that play to the left side of the bag. Good hustle by Markinson, almost beat it out on a routine grounder, but Stokes realized late enough. Now with a six to two lead to work with. McConaughey has retired his first two batters. Gets Loyola to swing there. He really just seems to be in a groove right now, attacking hitters. Pitch count very manageable, just at 56. The pitch swung on once again, quickly ahead, 0-2. There's that one strike change up to lefties. I bet you go back and look at when he's had hitters 0-1 or 1-1, left-hand hitters in particular, I think he's got that change up at least three or four times. The 0-2 and McConaughey gets him to go. He heads back into the dugout, pretty fired up. He's in business, and so, or, so are the Cornhuskers. They've got a six to two lead. We'll take a look at that last strikeout. Second game in this series. First pitch is a strike to Dylan Carey. Sengeg, the transfer from UT Dallas. Carey's 0 for 2 on the day. Here comes the pitch. 
in there for a strike. Senge getting ahead, 0-2. 692 ERA of the year for Navar Senge over 13 innings. Here comes the pitch, that's upstairs. Two innings, a one run ball on Friday. Couple of walks, no strikeouts. Couple of hits. Sengeg gets set and deals. That's popped up in the infield. Third baseman Dean Keenan handles it. It's about as, much, as, about as far off the end of the bat as you can hit it while still making contact. It probably hurt the hands a little bit on a cold day like today. As you see Sengeg's numbers, his eighth appearance of the year coming today. So not a, not a ton of strikeouts. Again, it's another one of these North Western pitchers who pitches to contact. That one runs inside against Rhett Stokes, who's 0 for 1 on the day, has struck out and also walked. Sengeg deals. That's fouled down the third base line. If you watch Sengeg, he's really on the very edge of the rubber. But Took the board trying to have out kind of a polar opposite from Luke Bidicky, who was working almost all the way on the first side, or the, on the first base side of the rubber. And Dixon was working in the middle, so kind of hitting all three sides of the rubber. First three Northwestern pitchers in this game. Here comes the pitch. That's popped up down the right side. Jackson Freeman in right field handles it. Quick two outs here for Amar Senge. Do a nice job coming in, pitching to contact. I mean, 10 walks and 13 innings coming in, so not great control numbers, but also has the ability to throw the ball over the plate. Would expect him to go multiple innings. All except one of his appearances have gone over one inning. His first pitch to Case Sanderson is in there for a strike at 88 miles per hour. Sanderson one for two on the day with a single. It's also walked. Scored twice as well. The 0-1. That's up there. Make that 1-1. One, one. Senge gets set and deals. Misses outside. Sanderson, the freshman for Nebraska. The lone freshman in the starting lineup. The 2 1. Over the plate, 2 2 count. Goes with the off speed. Sengeg trying to go 1 2 3 in his first inning of work. The pitch skips off the glove of Markinson behind the plate, and now it's a full count. Sanderson, the number 23 overall prospect in Missouri. Number two first baseman. The payoff pitch, that's high. So a two out walk to Case Sanderson at the top of the lineup. And again, you see why he's up there. <laughs> two walks already and a couple solidly hit balls to the opposite side. Doesn't have a stolen base yet. 0 for 1 in terms of attempts. Riley Silva now digging in. First ball is away to him. I always hear the old adage, the third out is the toughest to get for a pitcher. See if for Segeg, two quick outs and then loses the command a little bit to Sanderson. As Matthew McClure is stretching his Northwestern bullpen. Gets Silva to swing on that one, 1-1 one, one count. Silva batting 282 on the season, but has struggled with two outs. Hitting just 200. The 1-1. One, one. That's fouled back. Sega so again getting another hitter to two strikes. See where he goes to try and put him away. Two outs, a runner off of first. Here comes the pitch. That's upstairs. Trying to maybe be a little too perfect on that one-two fastball. Trying to paint the black instead. Left his front side a little open. Resulted in the miss 
Off the plate away. The pitch. Dialed off the left side. Tried the breaking ball away that time. Again, I know it can be tough psychologically for a pitcher to trust it against the opposite handed hitter, but if you can start a breaking ball close to the inner half and really break it towards the back foot, really hard to hit. The 2 2. Fouled back once again. And Sengeg now running into the same problem that Benicky was having during his three plus inning outing, which is getting the two strikes, but not really finding that put away pitch. It was through the first two batters and eight pitches and had two outs. Then about to make his 20th, still with two outs. Sengeg deals and gets him the swing. Sengeg gets out of the inning for his first inning of work. Nebraska still leading at six to two. in this Sunday matchup between the Cornhuskers and the Wildcats. Preston not digging in against McConaughey, who's took care of business. Set down 11 in a row now. 1-1 one, one count to Preston Knott, but after giving up that two-run home run to Jackson Freeman, he's really settled down. And again, this is what McConaughey expects. No runs allowed in his previous five appearances before today. So really just in a groove and bouncing back nicely after the one mistake. The 2-1. That's over the plate, 2-2. And again, I'm going to sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, but it's like that inside corner fastball a left-handed hitter is so hard to hit. Here comes the pitch. Got him. What do you know? Another inside fastball. Interesting note, Nebraska is not throwing the ball around after their strikeouts with nobody on base. One of the first teams I've seen to not do that. But again, make that 12 in a row now. For McConaughey as he racks up his fifth strikeout. He had good strikeout stuff, up to 30 now in 20 and two thirds innings. Sonny Rayo up for Northwestern now. Grounded out his first time up and McConaughey in his last start, went five full innings. That's his career high. That pitch is over the plate, 1-1. One, one. Deals. And that's skied out to left field. Camping underneath it is Anglum. So another quick two outs here for McConaughey. One more out and he ties that career high. Yeah, he's only thrown 65 pitches too. 41 strikes out of those 65 pitches. Just doing a really nice job of getting ahead early and really letting that breaking ball play. But it all starts with fastball command. Some the Northwestern coach, Ben Greenspan, also highlighted numerous times for his own pitching staff. McConaughey doing a great job of it today. Livermore swings on the first pitch, is up the middle, firing over to first for the end of the inning. So one, two, three inning for Mason McConaughey. He's taking care of business here in Evanston. First pitch of the top of the sixth. Evans, another one of these transfers in the Nebraska lineup, transferring from Parkland College. The 1 0. That hits the corner of the plate. 1 1 count now for Senge. So picked up his sixth RBI of the series with a ground out in the fourth inning. 19th of the year. Here comes the pitch. That's skied out to. Right field, Freeman handles it. 
Nice piece of hitting that time, going to the uh, opposite field. Uh, fastball away from him, but caught it a bit off the hands. Didn't quite get the full barrel to it. Freeman comfortably enough space out there and right. Senge gets the first out of the inning, but now has to face Tyler Stone, who's two for two on the day and has also reached with a walk. First pitch strike to him at 88 miles per hour. Stone started 18 of the 22 games that he's played in. Four homers, 16 driven in. That one's inside and makes it a 1-1 count. Got his average back up over 300 with his two hits so far. Comes the pitch. And that's to the first baseman, Laolis. He's going to flip it to Senge. So just like last inning, Amar Senge comes in and retires the first two batters he faces. See what he can do against Josh Karen coming up to the plate for the Cornhuskers. Is 0 for 1, but has reached twice, got hit by a pitch, and has walked. Northwestern pitcher's been understandably careful with him after the Grand Slam yesterday. Not too sure where that one was. Senge gets set and delivers. That's in there for a strike. And he has had good breaking ball command so far on the day. Started that one right at his front hip, bent it back over the plate. Two outs, the 1-1 one, one pitch gets him to swing. That's how you start one at the front hip, and you come right back to another one right there over the middle of the plate. Dove it off towards the other batter's box. Really nice pitch. Sengeg deals. That's away from him. Two outs, count at two and two. Swings on that one, and that's fouled back. Markinson tracking for it. And he gets the third out of the inning. A one, two, three inning for Amar Senge. He's loving it talking to his dugout. Northwestern still trailing by four. for the Sunday game today. His pitch to Griffin Arnone is upstairs. Yeah, now 14 batters in a row set down for McConaughey. And only thrown 67 pitches too. No reason not to keep him out here. The 1-0. Up there once again. So 2-0 count to Griffin Arnone, who struck out his first time up. Doesn't appear to be any action from the Nebraska bullpen down the right field line. It's immediately a mound visit. Certainly, Richard coming in 18, what, 18 of 21. One of the hotter teams in the country. Played a very tough non-conference schedule to begin their year, too. Arnone skies that one up. A couple of Huskers getting underneath it. And the first out of the inning is retired. So after the mound visit, McConaughey gets right back to business. And again, what's he gone back to? Fastball in her house. It's been his key to it so far. Northwestern pass just haven't been able to catch up to it. McClure fully throwing down the Northwestern bullpen. We'll see if he comes out to start the seventh inning or if he sing yeah, we got a bit of a leash. First pitch strike to Vince Bianchina, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Has yet to get a hit in this series. The 0 1. Foul back. Now 0 for 10. But just talking a, a little bit more about Nebraska's case to be ranked. Like you said, a really tough non-conference schedule. It's ranked 26th toughest in the country. 
Pitch comes in, out and away. Played that first weekend down at Globe Life Park. The showcase down there in Arlington. The one, two. Makes the count two and two. The nine game win streak, like we've said, for the Huskers. Trying to complete the sweep as Bianchina swings on that one. Has had a little bit of, have, have been a little bit unlucky with the weather in the past week or so. Their last midweek against Kansas State was just canceled due to weather. They say he didn't go and that runs the count full. Bianchina looking a little more confident in the box here, third time through the order against McConaughey. Gotten some better reads. Huskers playing a heavy shift on him to the right side. He hits it out there and over the head of the second baseman. That's being Keena's first hit of the series. First hit of the series and first hit in 15 batters for Northwestern after 15 in a row set down by McConaughey. That was just a good professional at bat by being Keena kind of fell behind. One, two, worked his way back to a full count. Got a fastball kind of middle away and very smooth swing right over the second baseman. See some light warming up in the Nebraska bullpen. Some stretching going on. But McConaughey is still working with a 6-2 lead. As Owen Meckel-Fatrick comes into the batter's box. He's one for two on the day, has a double and a strikeout. Which is long as five innings, but does clearly stretch out the throw. More, or about 80 at least pitches. 77 right now. The pitch in there for a strike. 89 miles per hour. We said he sits about 88 to 92. Again, I've been very impressed by his changeup. Again, clearly his tertiary pitch was thrown effectively. Gets McElfatrick to swing on that one. Get the head in the count, one and two. Wildcats with just three hits on the afternoon. Ian Kina just had a single. He's off a of first. The one, two, chop foul. Back to back breaking balls. We'll see where he goes here. First one was good. That one was a little, little higher, but McElfatrick still a little off balance. McElfatrick batting 438 on the season with run runners on. The one, two pitch. Once again, foul down the third base line. Now three consecutive breaking balls. So this is also setting up for him to go fastball up at some point. But Michael Patrick has already timed up the fastball once on his double in the first inning. And he continuing to stay away from that. Wildcats have not managed to score a run since that first inning. Here comes the pitch. That skied out to left field and over the wall. Big statement by Owen McElfatrick. He puts two runs on the board. Mentioned timing up the fastball. He did just that. He tried to go fastball up at him, but he left it middle end. And McElfatrick making no mistakes with it, continuing his hot series. Now has his fourth home run of the year. Vaults him into the Northwestern team lead. And two more RBIs to his total as well. Four for eight in the series coming in. Add a couple of hits today. Second homer in the series. And Northwestern right back in this ballgame. McConaughey's first pitch to Freeman gets him to swing. And after giving up the two run home run, he has to face the man responsible for the two other runs on the board. Freeman fouls that one. And this is going to end up being a tough luck stat line for Mason McConaughey out on the mound is it's not going to be a quality start. He's not giving up four runs. He's really only made two mistakes in the game. Northwestern, give credit to them, they've not missed him. Fastball coming in at 90. So still has the velo on it. One, two count. Gets Freeman to go looking. Freeman disagrees with that one, heads back to the dugout. 
but that's with having a sixth strikeout on the day. Again, that's been his location, his fastball to these left-hit hitters. Kind of inside corner. Worked really well for him. Markinson swings on the first pitch. That's blooped into center field, and that drops in for a single. Nice piece of two-out hitting from Markinson. Saw the first pitch and liked it. A lot more action in the Nebraska bullpen right now. You can see at least one pitcher warming up. Trent Loyolas comes into the left side of the batter's box. I'm sitting the tying run now. There's going to be a conference on the mound as the situation has definitely changed from the start of the bottom of the sixth. And this is going to be the end of the line. Second bound visit coming up here. Worthy, the Lincoln, Nebraska native coming out of Lincoln East High School. Inherits one runner. That's Markinson off of first. Here comes the pitch. Catches the corner. Tough matchup for Lyolas to come in and immediately be facing lefty-lefty and two good cutters to begin from Worthy. Gets ahead early on Loyolas. Here's the 0-2. That's up and inside. Breaking ball there from Wordley. Comes in with a 1.86 ERA on the season through seven appearances. The 1-2. Down in the dirt, evens the count. It doesn't necessarily have a ton of velo on it, but tight movement on that cutter slash slider. The lefty slows down the tempo. Gets set and fires. That's off the plate. So a full count now to Liolis. Good at bat by Liolis after falling behind 0-2. Laying off that one. It's a pretty competitive 2-2 pitch. Drifted outside. Here comes the payoff with two outs. Gets him to swing. Jalen Worley makes a statement in his first batter face. Heads back to the dugout, but not before Northwestern plates two in the bottom of the sixth. Comes in with a three-pitch mix, a fastball changeup, and a curveball. First batter he's facing is Garrett Anglum. That's good for a first pitch strike. Before the series, Coach Greenspan highlighting McClure's fastball, saying no one's been able to hit it, just needs to command it, throw it over the plate. He does it there. First pitch strike. Here comes the one. Dribble out to third. Bianchina is going to handle it and fire it over to Liolis. Gets the first out of the inning. And you talk about McClure of how he started off the season in the starting rotation for Northwestern as transition to being one of the first guys, usually out of the bullpen. And a big part of his recent success has been going back to his former self last year when he was a mainstay in that starting rotation. Not only locating the fastball better, but also reintroducing his curveball more into his repertoire. Another first pitch strike to Joshua Overbeek. And since he's down to the bullpen, the velo has also taken a tick up. When he was in that starting rotation, sitting mid, low to mid 80s really on that fastball, and now really touching 90 consistently. The 0-1, right over the heart of the plate. That fastball coming in at 90. He does sit now about 88 to 90, and has topped out at 93. That curveball, too, if we see it here, it's going to be big looping about 20 miles an hour slower. Big 12 6 curveball. Goes with the fastball, misses outside. Wanted the call there. Really great location, though, on the 0 2, just going right at him. Overbeak 0 for 2 on the day. Here comes the 1 2. Last hit to McElfatrick. And he throws over to Laolis to get the second out. 
again, talk about trust in the fastball. He's come in, he's done six pitches, he's done six fastballs, and he has two outs. Exactly how he wanted to draw at the beginning of his outing. And that's exactly what Coach Greenspan has been preaching to his guys is to get that command really good on the fastball early, get ahead on hitters, and then that sets up your secondary pitches. Three for three and first pitch strikes. There's the fastball coming in at 90. Dylan Carey, 0 for 3 on the day, a fly out, fly out a line out, and a pop out. So that comes inside against him. 1-1 one, one count. McClure gets set and delivers. Chopped right back to him. He tosses it to Liolis. A 1-2-3 inning for Matt McClure. He does his job, keeps the score at 6-4. Nebraska still leading 6-4 in the bottom of the fourth. Jalen Worthley on the mound for the Huskers. First pitch strike to Preston Knott, who's in the sixth hole today. It'll be followed by Sonny Rayo and Tony Livermore. Really a good part of the lineup for Ray or for Wordley to come into. So fouls that one off. Coach Green's fan mentioning for the series, Northwestern gets very lefty heavy kind of towards the bottom of the lineup, which works out very well for the lefty Wordley. Five straight lefties from five to nine. Fouls it back once again. You also have Bean Keen at the top of the order who can hit on either side. He's pretty consistent from both sides of the plate. The 0-2 down in the dirt. Knott has flown out and also has a strikeout on the day. It's worthy pitches. And he got him. Preston Knott can't believe it. But Jalen Worthley gets him to go down looking. Take another look at it here. Just freezes not. Yeah, it's almost, you can't really be sitting breaking ball in that situation. You just sped him up on the fastball. Blew it right past him. And now Ben Greenspan actually going to have a pinch hitter come in for Sonny Rayo. A late pinch hitting move. Normally you'd see him come out in the on deck circle. Yeah, Rayo was in the batter's box. That's Joshua Ramos. Backup catcher coming in the DH spot today. Again, righty hitter going up against the lefty throwing Worsley, playing the matchups here. Mr. Ben Greenspan. Worthy deals. That's upstairs. Ramos, a first year from West Palm Beach, Florida. That's in there for strike number one. I mean, kind of part of that revolving door outside of the regular fielding alignment for Northwestern. Just seven at bats on the year. Same about Rayo had coming into today. The pitch, and he gets him to swing, gets ahead one and two. We talk about Ramos. He hasn't had an at bat since March 9th against Louisville. Second straight strikeout there for Worthley, and he's working on the mound. And that's just a that's just tough for Ramos to come in, and also seeing an entirely new pitch. Uh, Worthley had thrown no changeups the two left-hand hitters before him, and then throws two back to back to retire. Ramos, really nice pitch, is sitting right around 83 miles an hour, just had him off balance. Quick first pitch to Tony Livermore, and he shows bunt. Streaking up the line, and the throw is in time. A one, two, three inning for Jalen Worthley. Holds Nebraska's lead to six to four. We will head to the top of the eighth here in Evanston.
top of the eighth here in Evanston. It's the bottom of the order for Matt McClure to face. Brett Stokes digs in. He's 0 for 2 on the day, but has also walked. McClure fires. That's good for a first pitch strike. That's been a consistent three theme throughout his outing so far. Yep, four batters, four first pitch strikes, and a lot of fastballs. The 0 1. That's out to Livermore. He'll throw across and in time. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's thrown down 12 fastballs and 12 pitches. I don't think we've seen any of the off speed stuff. May change now at the top of the order coming up in Sanderson. Case Sanderson, 0 for, or excuse me, 1 for 2 on the day with two walks. Two runs scored as well. He's got his. On base percentage up to 547. That's why he's in the leadoff spot. Fastball once again coming in for a first pitch strike. Walked in both the fourth and the fifth innings. Count now at one and one. Garrett Shearer is throwing down there in the Northwestern bullpen. Closer for this team. Probably in case they get the lead in the bottom of the eighth. The 1-1 one, one pitch. That, get, that gets the inside corner. There's the first curveball, and it was a dandy, 72 miles an hour. Again, almost a 17, 18 mile an hour difference. Really had those hitters off balance. That curveball will sit high 60s, low 70s, like you just saw there. Fouled back by Sanderson, 1-2, goes back with the fastball. McClure works from the first base side of the hour. A lot of movement in his delivery. Does a couple of bounces and then deals down in the dirt that time. That was the changeup. So after throwing nothing but fastballs for his first four batters, now opening up his bag of tricks a little bit. The 2-2 two -two pitch. That's out to left field, but just foul. Yeah, I love Sanderson's approach as a left-handed hitter and as a leadoff hitter. Very patient, obviously great play discipline, already two walks, but also when he does swing, he's not trying to do too much, doesn't get around the ball, focuses on trying to hit left field, knows his role is just to get on base. Only one extra base hit on the year, that was a triple. But again, we mentioned the five, almost 550 on base percentage doing exactly what he needs to do. The 2-2 pitch. Gets him to swing and a strikeout for Matt McClure. Put two outs here. Just fooled by the changeup. Just a pretty pitch. Started at knee high, had him way out in front. Now Riley Silva over three on the day. Here comes the pitch. Swing is on the first one, and that's fouled off. Silva, the lefty, coming in against the righty McClure. The 0 1. Shows bunt, gets a little bit of contact on it. Now the count at 0 and 2. So this is really where McClure can throw out his bag of tricks, like you've said. So I think you're just going with the breaking ball in 0-1, then Silva trying to bunt it. He looked like he was trying to jump back out of the way and simultaneously bunt the ball. Two outs here in the top of the eighth. The 0-2. That's outside. Hardest fastball of the day for McClure, 91. Do you go back with a fastball or do you challenge him with something else? Fastballs work so well, but the changeup is what he used to get Sanders. That's what I go to. Here comes the pitch. And he got him to end the inning. Matt McClure with two strikeouts in the top of the eighth. He's doing his job on the mound.
locating well, a really successful relief appearance. Be curious to see how much longer he goes, because he does, his appearances have been either three innings or one and a third, basically, over the course of the year. A couple three inning outings, and then four others not longer than one and the third. Doesn't let up there. First pitch strike to Griffin Arnon. The question is, will they want to turn Bianchina around to hit from the right side? Because I would imagine if a base runner gets on, then he'll be pulled for Mackle Patrick, the right hand hitter coming up. The 1-1. One, one. That's to the second baseman, Stokes. He handles it. But then on the other side, if he's going this well, he's now set down five in a row. Why would you get him out of the game? Again, outside of the two mistakes to Jackson Freeman and Owen Mackle Patrick, this Nebraska pitching staff has been dialed in so far in the day. They do have the lowest ERA in the Big Ten coming into the weekend. First pitch to Vince Bianchina is up for a ball. Fastball coming in at 90 miles per hour. Been sitting 90-91 with that. Here comes the pitch. Bianchina thought he called time. Actually worked out for him. What and granted. And now hitting coach Tyler Ross is going to call Bianchina over. Jalen Worthley gets a little bit of a break himself. He's trying to get him out of his rhythm a little bit. Not a bad idea. As Shearer has ramped up his throwing down in the Northwestern bullpen. Looking like he is going to come into this game. Being Kina from the right side. And he lines that one to left field. A one out single for Vince Bianchina. And after starting out the series 0 for 8, he's now 2 for 4 on the day. You're going to 0 for 10 if you count those first two at bats. And then singles in the past two. One side switch hitting has always been very impressive to me. It's the ability to hit from both sides. I mean, those hits were very similar, just right over the pull side middle infielder. Now conference on the mound for Jalen Worthley. And Everyone he, coming in. It looks like his day might be done. Yeah, I said if base runner got on, he'd probably be pulled for the right hand hitter, Mackle Patrick. Comes in with a 117 ERA through seven and two thirds innings pitch. First pitch to Mackle Patrick as a ball. And this is who Northwestern wants up at the plate right now, representing the tying run. Already has one two run homer in this game. And has timed up the fastball a lot. Another ball from Freilich, that time the off speed. Michael Fatrick represents the tying run at the plate. Got his average up to 356 now, challenging Markinson for that. He wanted that one, he swings. 2-1 count. Freilich coming in with the fastball to Michael Fatrick. Here comes the pitch. That's over the plate. Evens the count at two and two. So fighting back after getting down two and zero oh is Freilich. Back to back challenge pitches. Just saying, like here it is. Try and hit it. Haven't been able to so far. The two two. That's out of the zone. Runs the count full. Seventy six mile per hour breaking ball. Generous term for that one, didn't really break a whole lot. And the spinner stayed up and in, but luckily for Freilich, didn't get over the plate. Payoff pitch, that's hit up the right side. Third hit of the day for Owen McElfatrick, and the line keeps on moving for Northwestern, and it doesn't let up. You've got Jackson Freeman at the plate now. Certainly, and that was just a tremendous piece of hitting by Owen McElfatrick, realizing the situation perfectly. The defense was shifted for the Cornhuskers all the way on to the left side of the infield, as you see that, which means Mackle Patrick knew that if he just hit a ground ball right to where the second base would usually be playing, he would have himself a base hit. And that's exactly what he did. Very short, compact swing right to the ball. Here comes the pitch to Freeman. That's skied out to right field. And he does it again the first year. 
the go-ahead home run, his second home run of the day. Jackson Freeman, have yourself a day. Make that another mistake for the Nebraska pitching staff. That one just right down the middle, and Freeman knew it right off the bat. Tremendous celebration from the Northwestern dugout. Crowd on their feet. Standout moment for the first year. Just a pure swing there. And look at the reaction from McElfatrick on first base. Great job by the entire Northwestern trio to get the lead. Even though they only have 10 wins on the season, this Northwestern team is a never say die kind of mentality. It's the wind was definitely also blown out to right field on that one. But wow, Jackson Freeman, two home runs on the day. Bennett Markinson now at the plate for Northwestern. 2-1 count to him with one out. And Freelick coming in with not having allowed any home runs, just a 1-1-7 ERA. But oh, how quickly things can change. Only a second and third earned runs of the year charged to him. Markinson goes to his knees on that one. He's going to head back to the, to the dugout. So Freilich responds with a strikeout, but this is Northwestern's first lead of the afternoon since the bottom of the first. It looks like Nebraska to go back to the bullpen for a left-handed reliever. Nebraska native, he's a grad student, has been with the Nebraska program for those five years and has had a pretty storied career with them. First pitch strike to Trent Leolis. The 0-1. Another strike, 0-2. And Leolis, after having a very productive week, is on the verge of a golden sombrero here. Already three strikeouts. The 0-2. Gets him to swing and Kyle Perry ends the inning. But it's a whole new ball game. Seven to six is your new score, thanks to a Jackson Freeman three-run home run. We will go to the top of the ninth here in Evanston. Someone that Coach Ben Greenspan talked really highly of, both in the preseason and in our meeting with him prior to this series, said with the game on the line, he wants Garrett Shear to have the ball. But in a one-run situation, he's got it. Gets him to swing on the first one. Already has two saves on the year. It has been a bit shaky, though, in his past two appearances. Get up six earned runs over four and two-thirds, or three and two-thirds innings over that span. but. Clearly confident in big time situation. It has to go through three, four, and five in the Nebraska order to do it. Those two saves lead the Big Ten. Second pitch in there for a strike. Coming at 94 miles per hour. That's what he's topped out at this season. He sits low 90s on that fastball. Clearly coming out amped, as you would expect in this situation. It's going to take a moment to collect himself. Shear with that three-quarter arm slot release. The 0-2, that's away. But gosh, that velo, 94 once again. And really does a good job of keeping the ball hidden and then kind of thrusts everything forward in one motion. It's a lot of slow and then very fast to the plate. The 1-2, down in the dirt. Evens the count at two and two. He goes with the off speed there. 18 mile an hour difference between that fastball and that breaking ball. If he gets that about an inch or two higher, probably has Evan swinging and missing. Here comes the pitch. That's fouled away. And a big situation here for the first year, Shear. Again, a one run game. And this Nebraska team is one that really has never quit toward the end. They've had a lot of walk-offs in their season. 
again, holding a, a nine-game win streak. You know they don't want to give that up. And how about a hit to start off the inning from Cole Evans. He's rounding the bases, and he stops that second base. So a leadoff double, even though he gets behind 0-2 in the count, he comes back and gets aboard to keep the line moving for Nebraska. And Evans, just one of the more professional hitters on this team, already saw him have a work a tremendous walk in his first at bat in the first inning. And that one, again, just like I said, falling behind, but doing enough. And now Stone already has an RBI double in this game, just trying to hit a ground ball to the right side at the very least to move the tying run over. Stone with a double, a single, and a walk. First pitch strike to him. That was the off speed from Shear. Shear does have strikeout stuff, 24 of them in 25 innings. One be huge right here. Swings on that one. 90 mile per hour heater. So Evans off of second. He represents the tying run. Stone is the go ahead at the plate. The wind is still blowing out to right field. And Stone has been hot on the day. The pitch, that's up the middle. Going to throw it in and Evans goes to third, Stone at first. And how about that performance? I mean, three for four on the day has reached four times. But Nebraska not satisfied. It's Josh Karen at the play. He's 0 for 2, but and has K reached twice. Caden Grumball pinch running at first for Tyler Stone, getting some more speed in there. But no outs here in the top of the ninth. Runners on the corners. The first year, Garrett Shear in a huge situation for the Wildcats. First pitch is a ball. And you do have the base open, but if you're Shearer, you'd really prefer to not load them with nobody out, obviously. Double play would tie the game, but does eliminate some of the threat. Another ball, that's a off speed from Shear. Like you said, Kidding Brumbaugh, pinch running for Nebraska. Might be trying to get in the head of Shear a little bit too. He's got a heavy lead off first. That's out to left field, and the tying run comes in thanks to Josh Karen. So Northwestern gets the lead in the bottom of the eighth, but Nebraska not going away quietly. No outs here in the top of the ninth. You see that hit just right into left field. Yeah, again, it's a good piece of hitting. Again, three, four, and five in the Nebraska order. All three get hits. And now Anglin with the chance to give the lead. Nebraska has won the last eight games versus Northwestern as Garrett Anglin shows bump but pulls back. Nobody out. This would be a smart bunting situation. If you can get a sacrifice down, but still, Anglin had a chance to bunt earlier back in the first inning. He lays the bunt down, but it's foul. And going back to that win streak for the Huskers against Northwestern, eight straight games that they have won against Northwestern. This is the first time that the Huskers have traveled to Evanston in five years. So trying to come away from Rocky and Bernice Miller Park with the sweep would definitely help their case to get into the top 25. The bunt is laid down. Bianchina is going to throw to third and gets the lead runner. That was the old wheel play. One of the traditional bunt defenses. Basically, the way it works is the second baseman and the shortstop can entirely vacate the middle infield and begin charging towards third and first, respectively. You see Livermore is already basically on third by the time the bunt's laid down. And that allows the third baseman, Bianchina, to come in and make a play on the ball. Because normally as a third baseman, you're told to kind of like stay back. And if it's bunted hard, then go back and cover the base. But instead, in that scenario, knowing they needed the out at third in the tie game, not willing to concede it. Really nicely executed wheel play and bunt defense by Northwestern. 
So now one out in the top of the ninth. It's Joshua Overbeek up to bat. Two line outs on the day with a ground out and a walk. Runners off of first and second. 1-1 one, one count now. Shear goes with the feeder at 92. Command hasn't necessarily been the problem. Nebraska's just gotten the hits. Shear gets set, looks back, and delivers. In there for a strike. Catches the inside. Back to back, nice breaking ball. Does he go back to it or go back to the heater? Anglum off of first, Karen off of second. Here comes the pitch. That's hit to the first baseman, Laolis. He's going to flip it. That's good for out number two. So this game is still tied at seven apiece. Nebraska has been putting the pressure on in this top of the ninth after they tied it. But some good defense. And that was it, about to say, very nice play by Laolis. Not easy kind of to come across and make that flip pretty quickly. Good athleticism by Shearer, too, to get off the mound quickly. We've mentioned the defense for Northwestern has been a lot better this season. Uncharacteristic two airs on the day. As the first pitch comes in to Dylan Carey. Markinson has to come off the plate for that one. And catching all important here at the go-ahead run 90 feet away. Carey 0 for 4 on the day. Has made contact every time. Two outs, runners off a of second and third. The first year, Garrett Shear winds and deals. That was down hot, the third baseline. Almost cut off the head of Karen. Definitely a triple digit exit below on that one, most likely, but a little too amped. Turning around 92. Fouled back. Carey battling here. Makes the count one and two. And everyone is on their feet in the both the Northwestern and the Nebraska dugout. Nebraska looking to get the go-ahead run in the top of the ninth. The pitch to Carey. Fouled once again. That time way into the parking lot. Again, the wind out to right field right now. And Carey does have a hole of second base, a little bit of a shift over for Michael Patrick if he wants to hit one in between the defenders on the right side of the infield. Anglim off a second, Karen off a third. Two outs here in the top of the ninth. Here comes the pitch. And he got him. Garrett Shear strands two and keeps the game tied. Nebraska does, does plate one in the top of the ninth. And it's come down to this. Preston not up to the batter's box for Northwestern. Kyle Perry comes back onto the mound. Again, he's the veteran that you want for Nebraska in this situation. He'll face not Ramos and Livermore. The pitch. Chopped back to him. And not is called out. Immediately, Brian Anderson, the coach over at First for Northwestern, signaled that there needs to be a review, signaling to put the headset on. And of course, you do that in this situation. I mean, this is one you might as there's almost no downside. You get two challenges, you haven't used one yet. If not, it would be called safe. This would be a just huge call. And immediately, both not and Anderson signaling that he was safe. Obviously, they're going to be a little biased in that situation, but still, there is no downside to challenging this call here if you're Ben Greenspan. And he was put in a big moment against Perry on Friday. First pitch is down in the dirt. Mills was put into pinch hit with bases loaded two outs in that Friday contest. This time, 
one out, no one on in the top of the ninth. The first year from Morristown, New Jersey. Again, part of that revolving door in that seven spot for Northwestern. Perry finds the strike zone. He also struggled a bit this year, just 077. Has drawn four walks, though. He calls time. Bit of a generous grant by Corey Hinga behind the plate there. It seemed like Perry was definitely pretty close to starting his delivery if he hadn't already started it. Perry's also going to step off the mound and collect himself a little bit. Everyone on their feet here in Evanston. The 2-1. Swung on, make that 2-2. Two -two. Nice job by Perry to bounce back. Again, he's been with this program for five years. And Griffin Mills goes down looking. A huge strikeout here for Kyle Perry. And I don't really know what Mills was really contesting in that call. It seemed pretty much middle end. Let's get another look at it here. Yeah, it's that's solidly in the strike zone. Well done by Perry. One out away from sending this to extra innings. First pitch, deliver more. Chop foul. Perry was a member of that 2021 Nebraska team that won the Big Ten, headed to the postseason, and was placed in the regional out in Arkansas. Came back from Tommy John surgery and pitched in that regional. Nebraska trying to make a case to be put in the top 25. As Perry's pitch comes. And that's chopped down the left side. He dives to tag him. And you see him fired up there. Perry ends the inning himself. We're going to head to extras here in Evanston. Garrett Shear still on the mound for Northwestern. Gets ahead 0-2 on the count. 91 mile per hour fastball. Again, he sits low 90s. We've seen him top out about 94 today. Bradford taking over in the nine hole. And he chases. Ball gets away from Markinson. Oh, he can't find it. And Bradford keeps running around. Shear finally gets it. Thrown over to second, and Bradford slides in safely. So what was a strikeout turned into a man on second to start out the top of the 10th. And that's just an incredibly tough break. Markinson just had it deflect, looked like right off the side of his body. And then needed some really some help from his either first baseman or pitcher to kind of like point out where the ball was. Really just kind of like hiding right in his blind spot right there by the first base dugout and great awareness from Bradford to stretch that and get to second base. Bradford off a second, Sanderson at the plate and he plunks him. So two on now to start the inning in the top of the 10th. And it's the top of the order for Nebraska facing the first year pitcher, Garrett Shear. And I think this is a pretty obvious bunting situation coming up here for Silva. He already has a sack bunt on the day, back in the first inning. Ben Greenspan's gonna come out to talk to Garrett Shear. No one warming up in the bullpen. As already showing bunt. Pulls back. Nebraska already clinched the series, looking to get the sweep. Here comes the pitch. The butt is laid down. Throw to first is in time, but the runners do advance to second and third. 
Bradford now occupies third. Sanderson on second. One out here in the top of the tenth. And again, this could be a very different situation. So, a great bunt there by Riley Silva again at second of the day. But Bradford did strike out. That ball just got behind Markinson and he couldn't find it. But now you have runners off of second and third. With Cole Evans up to the plate, he's two for four on the day. He's also reached with a walk. This is who you want up if you're Nebraska. The pitch to Evans is away from the plate. Markinson has to slide away to get it. Infield in also for Northwestern. Be interesting to see with the base open and a first time hitter on deck and Will Walsh pinch hitting or taking over at first base for Stone. How she approaches this. That's out to center field. Hit to Arnone. Runners will go. And the go ahead run is scored. Nebraska gets the lead here in the top of the 10th, eight to seven. Again, nothing fancy, just playing fundamental baseball. Yeah, exactly. It was a very, again, professional fundamental at bat by Cole Evans. Knowing the situation, knowing he just needed to get the ball into the outfield, didn't try and do too much. Just punched it out in the center field. Now you've got Will Walsh up to bat. Swings on the first pitch, that goes to the shortstop. Livermore, he's gonna throw across. And it's in time to end the inning, but not before Nebraska recaptures the lead here in extras. They've got three more outs to go before they capture the, the sweep. We'll see what Northwestern can do. Western trying to avoid starting the conference play 0-3. Arnon swings on the first pitch. That's out of play. Arnon leading off the bottom of the 10th. That's a spot he's pretty familiar with. He led off most of last year. He's hitting 478 this season when leading off. But is 0-3 on the day. Fouls that one back. And just to note also, the bottom of the order for Northwestern has been pretty unsuccessful against Nebraska. No one five through nine has gotten a hit. But the bright side of that is coming up after our known, it's one through four, which is where all the productions come from. As you see the graphic, there are also no leadoff hitters who have gotten on base for Northwestern in this game. Carries pitches upstairs, one and two. All of Northwestern's runs have been scored via the home run so far. Two from Freeman, one from Michael Patrick. That one's out to right field. And a right into the glove of Evans. So two more outs for Perry on the mound as the lineup turns over for Northwestern in the bottom of the 10th. Tough break for Arnone. Hit that one right in the button. But right at Evans out there and right. Heavy shift for Bean Kina here. The second baseman Stokes is on the left side of the bag. He has a heavy swing on that one. Like we said before, Bean Kina, a switch hitter, this time coming in from the right side against Kyle Perry. Last time from the right side, line went right over the shortstop's head. That's at his feet. Evens count at one apiece. Bean Kina is two for four on the day, has two singles. The shortstop carry is playing very deep on the edge of the turf. The 1-1. One, one. A little bit of a check swing, but it was foul. Nice attempt by Karen to try and pluck that ball before it went into foul territory. Perry ahead, one and two has one out in the bottom of the 10th. The pitch. That was right into the Northwestern dugout. Being Snagged Kina. by Trent Liolas. Being Kina staying alive. Gives his teammate a little bit of a souvenir as well. Being Kina, the senior facing Perry. 
Perry gets a huge K there. Another change up to an opposite handed hitter from a Husker pitcher. This is clearly something they've worked on. And it worked out, but now, Mackle Thatcher goes Western, it's arguably hottest hitter at the plate. And another big moment, one swing away from tying this game. The biggest moment, it all comes down to him. Two outs in the bottom of the 10th, one run game. Michael Fatrick three for four on the day. Here comes the pitch, swings on the first one, that's fouled toward the right side. Michael Fatrick, the sophomore, has been a mainstay in Northwestern's lineup all throughout his first two years in Evanston. That's in there for strike number two. McElfatrick has to live on the edge here. And again, when Perry's had three pitches working like he has, this is a tough position. You see that 13 strikeouts to no walks for Nebraska pitching. Been really good. Here comes the pitch. Down in the dirt. Tried to get McElfatrick to chase there. Went back to the changeup, the same pitch he got Bianchino with, but he started that one a little too low, but he tried to place it the power Rackle Fatrick's had so far today. It all comes down to him. Staying alive still, fouling that one back. Just needs to get on base and keep the line moving for Jackson Freeman, who is the reason why we're even in extras to begin with. Two outs here in the bottom of the 10th. Huskers one out away from securing the sweep. That's chopped to carry at short. Throws across. And bring out your brooms, Nebraska. The Huskers capture a sweep in their first conference series of the year. That's win number 10 for them as well. They are red hot and making a case to be ranked this week. Certainly did. P pitching staff made a few mistakes Led to three Northwestern homers, but overall, Nebraska winning with their brand of baseball.